sentencing the two men, Mr. Justice O'Keefe, the president of the court, said he had taken into consideration the fact that both had been in custody for more than two months in extremely difficult circumstances. Earlier, he'd been told by counsel for Crinian and Wyman that while being held in Mountjoy prison in what amounted to solitary confinement, they had been subjected to constant chanting by other political prisoners who had also threatened their lives. Furthermore, Crinian's wife and two children had been forced to flee the country and their home outside Dublin had been substantially damaged. Since both men are entitled to remission of their sentences for good conduct, they are now technically free. This afternoon, they were driven away from court by police to an unknown destination. Half an hour later, I spotted Crinian in this telephone box in O'Connell Street, Dublin's main thoroughfare. It's just outside the Royal Dublin Hotel, which is where most visiting journalists stay. We followed Crinian down O'Connell Street. After a while, he hurried across the road and headed back up it, hunting for a taxi. Then he broke into a run. As we caught up with him, I asked Crinian if he didn't fear for his safety. He replied, what do you think? Dublin. 